One time I said activist, and <laughs> every time I see that word, I think, oh, okay. uh, she is kind of that, though, too. Not so. okay. Spiritual growth, path on that. Education and interpretation, do you grow? Social action, Elizabeth Parker and Catherine Hemphill. Membership, Jean Gallion. Gallion. Nominations, Carolyn Lamar, she's not here today. This is the slate of officers presented for 2024. Do not hear a nomination that we accept this slate of officers. I'll make a motion to accept the presented. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, so we have this. Slate has been presented, and do I hear a vote that we approve the slate by acclamation? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have any of that. <laughs> we are going to sing a hymn 378, Amazing Grace.
are in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So today we gather together as united women in faith, as a supportive and loving community, as women whose lives are connected to one another, and as women who are called to serve. Today we remember these precious and faithful women who have passed from us during the year. We grieve our earthly loss, but rejoice in favor of God's eternal and joyful presence. Love is stronger than death, and love always wins. This is not a hollow promise, but the heart of the gospel. These women, our sisters, our friends, our family, have been carried into new life. They have been lifted in our journey into new life in the love of Christ Jesus. We experience grief when death comes, but with God's promise, there is no fear. Death cannot separate us from God's love. So today we pause and remember, we celebrate these lives, remembering how much their presence blessed ours. With their love, their smiles, their faith, their joys, and their commitment to mission. May we keep their memories alive by being living examples of God's love and our love for one another. May our lives be enriched and blessed by their witnesses and may we forever hold them in our hearts. May their lives shine ever so brightly in each and every one of us. We have indeed been so very lucky to have known these women. And now we pause to remember, to rejoice in their lives well lived, and to be heirs of their legacies. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, in whose love and Christ we cannot be parted, hear our prayers of thanksgiving for all whom we remember this day. We rejoice in the promise of love and joy and peace and everlasting life. In the name of the one who loves us most. Amen. Amen. And now we we'll collect our offering. Today we collect our World Bank offering, where we bring our gifts of gratitude for the transformation of local and global communities by raising money for women, children, and youth in our neighborhoods and around the world. In the season of the season of Thanksgiving and hope, we thank God for our blessings through our prayers and giving. Thank you.
for participating in the service today. So I will um, announce that Kathy Goff will begin with speaking about sewing. What an honor it is to be here today. I love um, our family and my with this program. It's such a pleasure to be here. I know our mother is an interesting spirit as well. When mother passed away, um, Catherine came to be with our family. And all I could think of was blessed be the time that binds our hearts in Christian love. Because for this love that our mother raised us. It's in this church that we learned about that love and we grew up in that journey of love. And it's just so um, comforting to know that I have the love and support of our church family. As mother's memory failed, um, she couldn't connect with Christ in the past. So a lot of times she was just in the past. And the two things that kind of stood out in my mind was one, she was taking care of children. She was babysitting children. And the staff would call me in her hand and say, Your mother just all over the place. She was looking for those children's parents. She was doing her due diligence. She was not going to leave those children alone because she knew they were safe for those parents. And the other thing that really stood out in my mind was the pastor and hospital. She is always arranging chairs to get away from me. My only thought was, you know, the United States women, whatever she did in church, she was getting all those chairs to get away from me. And it had no purpose. I mean, that's one of the things that, as we lose our love, those things really still need that purpose. So, you know, every time before we left, and we have to reassure them that the chairs are in place, the sandals, everything's in good place, we are ready to go so she can rest easy. So that just shows the service of love, and, and this is what her memories brought back to us. Um, I really don't have a lot more to say other than. I'm just so thankful for our church and I'm thankful for all the support and love that she gave us in so many different ways. Sometimes we never know how something we do will touch another person's life. But I can tell you, you all have touched her lives and your family in so many ways and I'm so thankful. As I was going through other studies, I found this little saying, and I'm not sure who Pat came with. But I thought I would have focused on top of this. When I come to the end of the day and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloomy filled room. Why I cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not too long, and not with your heads found low. Remember the love we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey we all must take. Each must have alone. It's all a part of the neighbor's plan, a step on the road to home. When you're lonely and sick at heart, go to friends we know and bear your sorrows in doing good deeds. Miss me, but let me go. about Laura Jane Johnson, and I got to know her through service circle. 
But I didn't know her very long, so I called one of her granddaughters. They were devoted to her. And the first thing she said about Laura Jean Johnson was she was kind. That was the first thing she said, and, she, and, and then she went on to explain what the things that made her kind were she never said a bad word about anyone. What a wonderful comment to make. She was also devoted to her granddaughters. She taught them how to cook. She took them places interesting in educational trips. She attended every event they participated in, and they loved her. I saw it personally as she cared for, as they cared for her every day when she was bedridden. A true gift. She was faithful. She was a loyal, loving wife who lived with her husband all over the world. He worked for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and they lived in South Africa, Zaire, the Congo, and Bangladesh with two little children. She was a faithful Methodist and a member of the service circle, even attending when it was very hard for her to drive. So I light this candle for Laura Jean Johnson, kind, devoted, faithful. And as it says in the scripture, whoever believes in me, though she die, yet she shall live. Everything, and all of us certainly looked up to her and respected her. 
She was all, always calling me over at Beacon Pulp and Don Bunch because she always had things to donate to the sharing shops. I made many trips to Marie's house to pick up items that she wanted others to have. She was extremely generous and extremely humble. She was always smiling and always glad to see you. She enjoyed traveling and so much of the world. Her last trip was to the Panama Canal. She enjoyed the newspaper each morning. It was a connection to the world and to society. She read books on her porch and she loved being outside, either gardening or enjoying, enjoying the beauty of God's handiwork. Her church was her family and meant the world to her. She loved her sons and her daughters-in-law and was so proud of them. Her family was extremely important to her and she cared for family members who kept up with grandchildren and nieces and nephews. As her memory faded, she moved to Arbor Terrace where she thrived. She loved people and being around them. She so very much appreciated the many cards that were sent to her. Marie passed away one month short of her 94th birthday. She was loved by many and will be missed by many. She leaves a legacy of love and kindness and incredible generosity and those delicious mouth-watering loves. Stop saying you have one, or are you always a sister even when the other half of the equation is gone? That came from My Sister's Keeper by Jody and Cole. I am your sister. And she, from day one of my life, is a devoted sister, big sister. For the first few years of her life, like nine and a half years, she was an only child, but then I came along. <laughs> <laughs> Moved her off of her throne. <laughs> but she adjusted well. She quickly got to work putting aside her dolls and assigning me the role of baby. <laughs> she called it under a pear tree or an apple tree. I thought it was a pear tree, but I guess she knew better than I did. Um, and calling me Suzanne was like foreign language to her. I was always Susie, which was my childhood moniker, and, and if we were in public and she needed to call me Suzanne, I could tell by the change of her voice that something was different and that I should behave. <laughs> well, a few years later, uh, when I was five and our sweet mother was confined to a nearly a year of bed rest for, for tuberculosis treatment, she was 14, Mary Lou was 14, and she became my rock. And we had lots of aunts taking care of us physically, but she was my emotional rock. And in today's lingo, we had each other's back. And that lasted till the day she died. Family was everything to Mary Lou. Hope I can get through this part. After high school and college studies, family grew to include her husband, John, and their two children, Luann and Johnny. She felt fortunate to be a stay-at-home mom and later to teach two and three-year-olds in a local church's daycare center before she retired. But during every phase of her life, she never abandoned her, her role and her place as a big sister. I was always included she was always eager for me to come home permanently. She saw, sent me a job advertisement one time, <laughs> trying to convince me. In the last leg of her earthly journey, which it spanned about six years, she lost her husband, John, and was diagnosed <coughs> with a ravaging disease that we knew nothing about at that time, Lewy body dementia with Parkinson's. 
It's a fatal disease with no medications that can, with certainty, alleviate <coughs> symptoms or work for every patient. It might work for one and not, not another. She was pretty stoic. She didn't want to take a lot of medications. And she accepted her fate and lived with an unspeakable grace and resilience until her body could just no longer fight it. She had moments when her wry sense of humor came alive, though. Um, I knew, I, from time to time, I knew her, her role as a big sister had not faded. Um, they might be simply in giving me some advice. Now, Susie, you might need to watch this. <laughs> Or showing concern, why don't you just sit down and rest a few minutes? Or when I entered her room and asked, how are you? She would say or respond in a way that communicated better now that you're here. Mary grew up in the church. She professed her Christian faith at an early age. She was an active participant in youth and adult activities. But by the time I moved back to Knoxville in 98, she, had, she and John had begun attending Church Street, but they hadn't joined yet. And I was looking for a church home a couple of years later, and glad I felt drawn to Church Street, where there would also be family. Because she and John always sat on one of the back rows. They were back, back row Baptist, I guess. But they made friends. That became a little community. And one Sunday in 2001, when I told them I would be joining, uh, by the last verse of the last hymn, the three of us were walking down the aisle. <laughs> Mary Lou always had a heart for the disadvantaged. We enjoyed shopping together for clothing and toys to donate to charity. It was a hunt for the best bargain and the most we could buy. Someone asking for food or help along the roadside uh, would prompt her, when possible, to find a food source and go back and hand them a bag of sustenance. Her compassion motivated her very being. She was gentle and she was kind and she was content to be an humble servant. She never saw the limelight. And it was no surprise when she became involved in UMW service circle and served in the Thursday soup kitchen. She reveled in telling me what whom she had met, what it was like to help in the sharing shop, what they were sewing in service circle, who brought goodies to eat, member, uh, introducing me to members of her circle, inviting me to join them on their trips to the Smoky Mountains, and I, I might be in the service circle and did that, and thinking about ways to make the cakes that she was working on in the soup kitchen. She wanted to kind of decorate them for holidays to make it special for the, for the guests. <laughs> Through these activities, she made new friends, learning that she lived close to Joe Wickers and Peggy Tillery. She helped lead a three-person carpool to get them all to church for the UMW meetings. Then she introduced Joe and Peggy to me, and I became their friend. Mary Lou's compassion, her integrity, and her service are hallmarks of her discipleship and contributions to the mission of the church. Her Christian faith undergirded her life, and one day during her illness, I asked her what her favorite Bible verse was, and without batting an eyelash, she said, Oh, you know that verse in Romans, being Romans 8, 28, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I saw her in her life's challenges and joys and, and her walk of faith. I saw her trust that to be truth. Mary Lou's two children, Lou Ann and Johnny, their, their spouses and the two grandchildren, Philip and Susanna, my beloved nieces and nephews, we are ever so grateful for the prayers, the cards, the flowers, the visits, the lighting of candles, every gesture of care and concern that you extended to us. And today's service is even part of that gratitude. So, I end as I began. If you have a sister and she dies, do you stop saying you have one? Or are you always a sister, even when the other half of the equation is gone? 
I know my response can only be, I have a sister, I'll always be a sister, even when half of our equation lives beyond the veil and in my heart.
the one that doesn't exist anymore, and they ran into each other. And, and the rest is history. <laughs> they were married for 43 years. They were a wonderful, loving couple who did everything together. They traveled all over the world. And one of them would wake up and say, do you think we have time to go to the Grand Canyon next week? And we were just spontaneous to go to Oregon. Three weeks before she died, they were on a Viking cruise to Asa uh, and other places because she wanted to see the Northern Lights. That was one of the desires that she had. Her sons, Neil and Ben, were very active in sports and we had them at the University of Charleston. And they went in the door with them. They went to England and played golf at the famous golf course there. They were always there supporting their sons. Ben died two years ago in his 30s. Nancy herself, believe it or not, was a very avid tennis player and a bicyclist. She invented bicycle all over the southeast, and, and she, she actually went bicycling last two months ago. Her son Neil and Elizabeth have three beautiful daughters. Their names are Ella, Amelia, and Nora. And there were Nancy and Dave's source of joy. Nancy loved reading to them, playing with them, and caring for them when needed. David recently told me that Ella, who is six years old, said to him, I am mad at God because he took my man. Rest in peace, Nancy. You are loved by me, and you will never be forgotten.
not going to be with the living, I will bring this back to the In the rising of the sun and in its going down. <laughs> in the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter. We remember them. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring. We remember them. In the blueness of the sky and the warmth of summer. We remember them. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as they as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us. And as we remember them. Please sing Santa's one and four of the hymn 708. And I believe we may remain seated even though we are not. Thank you. 